Hello, my MGTO brothers and my Ivmore brothers. I feel a ramble coming on. I was looking at this particular fairy tale or this this tale, and it brought to mind what's going on currently with the Me Too. So I'm going to retell this, this tale, my version, of course. I'm sure you've heard it before. Very famous tale. And then I'm going to give my feeling about how this relates to our current dilemma coming out of 2017 and into 2018. In the forest, there lived a scorpion. And the scorpion was very happy where he lived. He, there was food, you know, there was water, there was shelter where he lived. You know, scorpions shelter in, in the ground, in their, in their nest, in their lair. And the scorpion was very happy. And he came upon the rainy season in the forest. And in the rainy season in the forest, where he was in the lowlands, the forest started to flood. And it started flooding out his home. So scorpions do what scorpions do. And he was a smart scorpion. He sought higher ground. So he sought higher ground, but yet the waters kept rising around him to the point where he was stuck on top of this rock and there was nowhere or no way for him to get off. He couldn't walk across the waters because they were too deep and the where he was in the forest had turned into a river. So out of desperation, the scorpion prayed to the scorpion king, send me a way out lest I die. So instantly, he glanced down and he saw the frogs who were perfectly happy with the floods. In fact, they were ecstatic because there was more food, there was more water, they could travel better. And they were swimming by just as happily in the fast moving water. So the scorpion king put the, uh, the idea into the scorpion's head to cry out for help. So the scorpion did. And as luck would have it, this big frog was swimming by and he heard a cry for help on top of the rock. So frogs are as frogs are. They are nosy. So he swam over to the rock, climbed up and to see who was crying for help. And he noticed it was a scorpion. And knowing what his mother had taught him, you know, scorpions and frogs are enemies. Scorpions sting frogs and scorpions do as scorpions do. They also eat frogs. So as the frog slowly turned around and started to leap off the rock, the scorpion cried out, please, Mr. Frog, please let me speak to you for a moment. The frog hesitated cautiously and turned around and frogs do as frogs do. They're nosy. So he turned around to hear curiously what the scorpion had to say. So the frog said, go on, speak, but not too close. So the scorpion curled his stinger around and tried to hide it behind him. And he spoke. He said, the waters have flooded out my home. The waters are rising around me. And if you swim away, I will die. I will drown here on this rock. And my scorpion king has sent you like an angel to rescue me and take me across to high ground. The frog thought about it and he was a little flattered that the scorpion would call him an angel sent from the scorpion god, the scorpion king. So the frog inched a little closer. So he said, how can I help you? I know it is quite unusual and a quite a risk for you to trust someone like me to climb on your back and allow me to ride across to safety. Frog looked at the scorpion and said, ride on my back? Are you kidding? You're a scorpion. Scorpion says, yes, I am. And the frog said, your venom is poisonous. And if you sting me, I'll be paralyzed and I'll die. And the scorpion said, if I'm on your back and we're deep in water and I can't swim, 
then I'll die too. And the frog said, what if I get close to the edge of the shore and you sting me and as I'm dying, you leap off to safety? Scorpion says, I swear to my God, the Scorpion King, that that would be hardly a way to repay not only his blessing, but your kindness as an angel of mercy. Again, the frog was flattered and he inched closer. Do I have your word and your on your scorpion king that you won't sting me if I allow, allow you to get on my back and swim across? The scorpion swore, looked up to the heavens and swore on his honor, on the scorpion king's honor, that he would not sting the frog. And he would allow the frog, if the frog did him his courtesy, he would not sting the frog, but he would allow the frog to go on his way. He would be deeply in debt. Again, the frog was flattered. And against his better judgment, he thought about it and he decided to take a gamble. So he turned around and allowed the scorpion to mount him on his back. And with that, the frog jumped into the water and began to swiftly swim across the fast flowing waters. Now the frog, not completely trusting the scorpion, swam as fast as he could, even though he had decided that he would trust the scorpion. But in the back of his mind, in his frog gut, he didn't want to chance it. So he wanted to uh, take the scorpion across as promised as fast, quickly as possible and be on his way. So the frog swam mightily against the current, taking the frog to high ground. And a scorpion with glee looked across and he could see the higher ground where the waters weren't be, wouldn't be touched. He could find his new home and he would be saved. All was going well. The frog was swimming. The scorpion was calm and patient and they got about three quarters of the way across the sm the fast moving waters frog thought he was home free he would allow the the he would do a good deed he would allow the scorpion to be on his way and he would again going back to be the happy go lucky frog playing with his frog buddies just at that moment he felt this sharp piercing burning sting in the middle of his back. He could feel the venom flowing through his veins and his muscles began to go numb. And he started to slow down and then he started to sink. With his last breath, he looked up on his back as the scorpion was looking him dead in his eyes and he said, why would you sting me? Now we're both gonna drown. You gave me your word. The scorpion was sad and he looked down at the frog, knowing that he too would die. He said, I couldn't help it. I'm a scorpion. It's in my nature. Now, what does that have to do with me too? I'm sure you can always I'm sure you can already guess what this tale. This parable has to do with me, too. Women did not give themselves equality. They did not prove themselves in the battlefield. They did not prove themselves in the boardroom. They did not pull them, pull, prove themselves in the sports arena. All that they have, all that they do was allowed and given to them by men provided for them by men, protected by men. And what they have done is ridden on men's back across the pond. They've ridden on this men's back to gain power by pleading and asking men for access, for power, for what they call justice. And just like the frog, men have acted on behalf of women and done things for women, probably against their better judgment. 
Me Too is one of those examples. We have given women the power to ruin people's lives, hoping that it would bring justice to people that were victims and women would not use it in an unfair or malicious way, that they would not use it to destroy people's lives or men's lives willy nilly, that they would not use this power for revenge. Even though men know in the past women, when given the power and given the access to do just that, they have. And against our better nature, we have given them the platform and the ability because they say they wouldn't do it. They say that they wouldn't sting men in the back. They say they would never hurt innocent men or hurt innocent people. And that we should trust them, always trust women, always believe women, even without proof that you must take every woman at her word, even though we live in the land of due process, even for thousands of years, bearing false witness has been a sin and a crime. Even though for thousands of years, people were innocent and proved until proven guilty. We trusted that women that have been raised in this culture for thousands of years would follow that edict, would not bear false witness, would allow for the innocence of a man until he could be proven guilty. So we allowed women and me too to ride on the back of justice, hoping against hope that they wouldn't stab justice and just men in the back. But just like the scorpion, even though me too will probably set women back, will probably cause one of the biggest backlashes that feminism and fem women have ever seen. Just like the scorpion on the, on the frog's back, knowing that she will drown too. She can't help it. It's in her nature. And Me Too has proven that. That even when you try to reason with women, talk logic to women, talk fairness to women, The Me Too movement only grows, only gets worse, only captures and encloses and snares more men, only makes women more intolerant of what men do. But as a scorpion, even though it in the long run will actually hurt them and hurt women as a whole, they can't help it. It's in their nature. With that, that's the end of my ramble. This is BGS out. I'll see you guys on the next one.